Ready? Yep. Okay, we are rolling. And action. Hello. So welcome back to Frosty's OP. And uh, what we're going to be doing today is a space update. There is lots of stuff going on right now. It's like kind of really, really exciting. Uh, first thing that's going to come up clearly uh, because of today is SpaceX. The Starlink One launch is tonight. Uh, so that's May 20, May 16th at 0230 UTC time. And local time, which is Florida time, will be 1030 at night, tonight. So be sure to watch that. This is an important launch. Uh, there's lots of stuff to talk about with this actual launch. Uh, first thing is that it's only SpaceX related. In other words, uh, there's no other contracts being done. This is purely for the benefit of SpaceX. And what they're launching tonight are the first of their Starlink satellites. Now, what makes this really, really interesting um, is the way they've packed these satellites in. Now, before I, do, I mention that, um, obviously these satellites are for a project where they want to become a telco and they want to launch a constellation of satellites that will be in low Earth orbit all around the planet. And the idea is, is that your internet connection zooms up to the nearest uh, satellite in low Earth orbit, pings around in a peer-to-peer -peer network and then down to another point. Now, unlike traditional satellites um, with satellite uh, internet, there isn't going to be the latency issues because the, the satellites that are currently used are in geosynchronous orbit, which means they're 35,000 kilometers away, which is well, 22,000 miles-ish. And so you get a huge delay having to go there and all the way back. These satellites from SpaceX, the, the Starlink satellites, will be in low Earth orbit. So literally be a few hundred kilometers up, you know, sort of a few hundred miles. And so therefore the, uh, the time for the actual um, latency, the time for the speed of the data to go through is going to be much, much shorter. So very, very different from current satellites. And obviously they will have more bandwidth as well, especially being a peer-to-peer -peer network where all the satellites are all communicating between each other. Now, I'm not going to go into too much about satellites because it's more about the space side of things. <coughs> Excuse me. But the big thing is, is uh, and the, some of you may have seen this picture, is the way they've packed these satellites in to the, to the Falcon 9 is incredible. They've managed to squish in 60 satellites in this kind of pizza box setup. And this has never been done before. And what we've also found out from a tweet from, uh, from Elon is that there's, there's no deployment mechanism. You know, that traditionally when you've had multiple satellites being deployed, there's a deployment thing that sort of ejects them off into space. There is no such thing. These are all just stacked on top of each other and they're gonna somehow deploy on their own. And uh, it's quite exciting to find out how they're gonna do this and how exactly it's gonna work. And the way these, these satellites look, I mean, they look like pizza boxes which isn't your traditional kind of satellite shape. Normally you've got a cube with bits hanging off of it. Um, so that's something that's going to be definitely worth a watch and hopefully that we're going to see video of, of that, of the actual deployment mechanism, because that's going to be fascinating. And the other elements of this launch that, that are interesting is the, the payload. Uh, this is the heaviest payload that's ever been launched by SpaceX, 13 tons, which is, that's heavy. That's a, that's a lot of weight, and that's, what, 22,000 pounds? Sorry, 30,000 pounds. So um, I am sure they're going to be biting their nails from launch to max Q. As, like I said, this is the heaviest payload that they've ever sort of shot up into space. So that's going to be fascinating. And the other element is they're reusing the fairings from the Falcon Heavy launch from a couple of months ago. Um, was it last month? A couple of months ago? It was April, April yeah, uh, for Arabsat. And they're going to stick those on and you know, try and reuse the fairings. Uh, so a lot at stake for SpaceX. You know, they've got a lot on the line here. Uh, and it's going to be fascinating as to how this all pans out. Uh, one thing I have found out with the, with the Starlink is that, um, from what I understand, it's claimed that Glenn Shotwell, who's the CEO of SpaceX, has said that the, um, the optical links are not actually installed on the satellites. Now, the optical links are the lasers that allow the satellites to communicate with each other. So it doesn't look like these will be operational in any way uh, when they go up. And I think it's much more a case of make sure the deployment mechanism works and everything achieves a stable orbit and is where it should be. So that's kind of everything that's just happening just tonight. So that's pretty exciting. Then uh, other piece of news is uh, Blue Origin announced Blue Moon, which is their lunar lander. 
and there was a sort of a long presentation, which was unusual because it didn't invite the kind of usual sort of astronomy buffs and, and space buffs and space media. And it was done in, uh, I believe it was in Washington rather than on the West Coast. And uh, it seemed to be much more of a corporate style event. And it was very kind of low on information. I mean, the, the, the thing looks great and it all kind of makes sense as to what it wants to do. Uh, as to how far they are along in the design, that remains to be seen. And obviously the key elements of that is the BE-7 rocket, which is their uh, hydrogen fueled rocket, which they plan to use for the lander. Um, that's uh, purely in the design stage. Now they've had the okay from NASA to test fire it this summer. Uh, and, I was, and clearly that is a linchpin. You know, if they can't get this thing to work, then this project's not going anywhere. On top of that, uh, it's not going to fit in their Shepherd, and the Shepherd can't you know, get to the moon. They're going to need the new Glen. And uh, so not only do they have to get that working, they have to get new Glen up and running, which is also a similar situation that we have with the SLS. Uh, which brings me on to the next subject. Uh, which has just, just been announced, that NASA have got an extra 1.6 billion uh, put in as a budget request. So the currently is 21 billion, and um, the, um, Trump has apparently pledged you know, a, a budget request of an extra 1.6 billion. Now, where's this 1.6 billion going to go if they, if they get it? Uh, well, that's, that's the big thing, is that uh, originally the plan was that um, NASA wanted to get their lunar gateway you know, which is their, their station orbiting the moon up by sort of by 2024, 2025, and then get back on the moon by the end of the decade, so 2029, 20, 2030. That's all changed now. And now they want to be on the moon by 2024. And, uh, you know, the government has pledged that that's what they want to do. And so this is where the extra money is coming in. And where that money is going to go? Well, clearly they don't have a lunar lander. Um, Nobody has. I mean, obviously, Bezos has said, oh, yeah, we've got Blue Moon. Uh, but whether that's going to be operational, who knows? Now, one thing that has been uh, quoted as a potential lunar lander is a couple of months ago, uh, Martin Lockheed uh, did a video. You know, here it is. Yeah, just sort of running in the background there. Um, of the, a lunar lander concept. And their idea is, is that because they're already working on Orion, which is the capsule, it's like, well, we'll take Orion and we'll take all the bits of Orion that we need, like avionics, life support, etc., and we'll just all repackage it all and we'll have a lunar lander. So whether um, it goes just to them or whether it actually gets put out as a proper uh, fulfillment contract, who knows? I mean, there is, a, on April uh, 8th, I believe it was, there was originally a fulfillment requirement document from NASA for, I think it was a lander. And on April 26, they changed it to a fully functional lander with ascent module uh, and LEM. So that, that's you know, changed the spec completely. Now, whether SpaceX and Blue Origin uh, go in for this, as well as Martin Lockheed, and even potentially Boeing. I mean, obviously, Boeing have got the Starliner uh, capsule, so they could potentially do the same as Martin Lockheed. And SpaceX, well, I mean, they've got a lot on their plate right now, and I don't, really don't know whether they want to take this on as well. So it's going to be really interesting to see you know, literally what happens over the next few weeks with regards to this development of the lunar lander. But from this NASA document, it is clear that the money is, we want to buy a lunar lander. We're not going to develop our own. On top of that, uh, the lunar gateway, in order to be able to get it out faster, because that, especially with the Orion, that needs to be in place for them to be able to use the lunar lander that Martin Lockheed suggested, uh, they're going to have to trim it back. And so they've cut some costs there, and they've simplified it, and I believe they're going to have less modules attached to it, uh, so that its main purpose is to provide uh, an orbiting platform from which to take the lunar da lander down to the uh, surface of the moon. So here goes, so lots of stuff happening. Um, and <laughs> and I've look, uh, is he going to subscribe? I uh, hopefully he will. <laughs> hey, it's not it's not a dog show. We're doing space. We're doing space. All right. So anyway, it was good timing. I'm kind of done now. That was as quick an update as I could give because I don't want to be rambling on for too long. I hope you found that interesting. Please leave your comments. You know, tell me your thoughts about this as well. Are you excited as I am? Uh, you know, this, the space race is really really changing. Also, we haven't even talked about. You know, whether this is going to involve, you know, the European Space Agency, Roscosmos, China, you know, India, 
you know, have been trying to get on the moon as well. You know, are these guys going to get involved? Is it going to be truly international at like the space station? Or is it going to be kind of US-led? We shall see. So, um, yeah, I look forward to your comments. If you like this, please subscribe. And I'll be posting regularly. Thanks a lot. Oh, and hit the bell.